This is a story about crocodiles that settled here a long time ago. From the beginning, they were hostile to all the other animals and all the other animals were hostile to them. Yet, hostility was nothing new in this land. Fear had its own way in this world. You do feel trapped. You feel anyone could be walking outside and everyone is looking out. Every, sometimes the men would go out, start driving around. We've got radio contact with each other, all the houses. And if someone hears something, they would radio. The moment that you say you've got fear inside of you, then anything can happen. You open all doors, so anything that you're afraid of, or it, it, it starts as an idea in your mind, and then it, it starts growing, and then you start speaking it, and then it happens. I don't fear white people. I don't, I don't fear white people, Indians, Asians, but black people. It sounds horrible, really. It sounds horrible. The church is seen as the last place of safety for us. So we keep out other people are not part of us. You know, you must stick to your own people. It's a very strong feeling. How do you teach a little child in South Africa not to be afraid of black people? She doesn't like to walk from the TV room to the sitting room or to the kitchen alone. And uh, it's now a few months. She's sleeping in her own room again. So um, it's, it's getting better slowly. The estate's walled perimeter is equipped with 24-hour guarded patrol. State-of-the-art technology is installed at all controlled access points, providing residents with total peace of mind. The fears and the conversation that goes around the fears, again, whether real or imaginary, is part of the culture or the part of the mythology of, of the country itself. So it's a way that people relate to each other. In some countries, when people get together, they spend a lot of time talking about the weather or the schooling or the food. In this country, people talk a lot about fears. And, you know, it's hard to uh, distinguish, you know, what's a real fear and what's an imaginary fear. Fear also is related to not knowing, not knowing, lack of knowledge. And I think, I tell people, if you could go with me and share in my services, and be with me and experience what happens, uh, then your life will be enriched, but you, your whole concept, your whole view will change. You see, I've experienced that for 43 years now. I am basically the only European person at the taxi rank that's selling any products, but they are They've accepted me and uh, we work together very well. My people think I'm mad, uh, me uh, being a European among all the blacks there, that uh, it's not safe for me. And I feel safer there than what I will be feeling uh, in, in, in the center of Rustenburg, because I know uh, the people will protect me there. I invite them to come and join me, to come and be with me for a day. But they say, say there's no way they'll come down there. So, we must know that there are different types of crocodiles. Some never evolve and live in fear, yet they are very good at surviving. Others make fear their friend and evolve in ways you cannot believe. So what does a crocodile stand for? It's vicious and it's treacherous. So the only way I suppose that one could redeem it is if man redeems that quality and, or mankind redeems that quality of treacherousness. Why must I be here? And, and what, what is the purpose of my being here? I always ask myself, you know, I'll, there must be a purpose in things. Then one has to find a way to live with it. You know, you, you, it, it won't go away by itself. We can't run away from it. So in some way or other you live with it. I had one way of working with anxiety and that was by telling myself a fairy tale backwards. <laughs>